Hey everybody, I'm not going to talk for a long time here, but uh, I've had a lot of questions over the past weeks and months on uh, my thoughts on Carl Monk and the code. In case some of you aren't familiar, I will leave some links below in case you want to familiarize yourself with it. But I find it extremely interesting. It's one of those things I definitely consider when doing my ancient history research. Carl Monk kind of brought to the forefront uh, what is called archaeocryptography and the use of math in uh, ancient ruins and the distance and the structures themselves and I think it's all very fascinating and there are a few things I don't see eye to eye to them with but uh, I think that that could have just been some initial uh, errors on my part on plotting out some stuff but if some if somebody says something that you don't agree with you shouldn't throw out everything else he says and that's true with a lot of people that I look into, what they uh, read and write and uh, put out there as far as information. Ancient history research is not a court case where if somebody tells a fib, you got to throw everything else out. I think that's a big mistake some researchers have is if somebody says something that they hate or totally disagree with, then everything else that person says they'll dismiss. And I think that's a big mistake. I just wanted to say that. But Carl Monk's The Code, I find it absolutely fascinating. But sometimes in ancient research, you have some disputes. You have stuff you really like. Sometimes math can't be argued, argued with. And then sometimes the source of that information, you kind of go, what the hell is going on here? And in case some of you aren't familiar with this, uh, Carl Monk says he got his information from aliens. He was abducted and taken to Nazca. So, you know, why why would he say that? Well, you got a few different possibilities. And I will leave this up to my uh, commentators in the comment section to just discuss this. I really don't know what to think about this. But I find it fascinating, Carl Monk's information. And I find it even more fascinating where he says he got the information. So here's a little bit of Carl Monk's interview from Red Ice Radio. Enjoy, and leave your comments in the comment section. I'm sure people will have some. Uh, you know, we've been covering the issue of, uh, uh, you know, megalithic sites and their relationship for, for years on the program right now. So maybe you can just tell us a little bit about your background, Carl, and how you got into the uh, aspect or the work pertaining to the code, Carl. The megalithic sites, all of them, pyramids, great earthworks, stone circles, if they're geometric in form, they're not ours. Never were. They belong to the gods. And uh, what what more can you say about that, Carl? I mean, who who are who are the gods, and how did you come to this uh, this conclusion, Carl? Well, I'm not sure who they are, but I have rolled with them. They took me to uh, Nazca in Peru one night about 20 years ago and filled me in with all the details. They taught me their math. I can read Nazca now like most people can read a newspaper. That was quite a shock. Uh, what more can you say about this? Uh, who, who, who were they? Uh are we talking about aliens? So what, what are you talking about here, Carl? They're, they're aliens. They're aliens. I was one night back in uh, 82. I went to Nazca one night for a briefing, for a college education, whatever you want to call it. All right. And it was 5,000 miles down and 5,000 miles back. They did it all about an hour and a half. I was not aware of it until I was at Peru. I, under, I remember all of Peru, but I was not aware of the trip until about 10 years ago when my granddaughters, who were staying at the house overnight that particular night, watched the event. It so scared them they wouldn't talk about it. We just now, just now talk about to the mother. And did they just well, realize this, or was this a memory from, from, uh, from
from them that it suddenly came to them, or, or how did this unfold? It was their memory, the night I was abducted. They were awakened by a bright, very bright light in the room. Got up, ran to the window, and there I was out there talking to a couple of aliens. It hit me just as hard as it hit them. I bet. So, yeah. so what did they, uh, did they teach you, and did they tell you why they wanted to teach you the things they did? No, they did not. The only thing I can assume is they wanted me to get this word out so that people would know that we are not alone. And what more can you say about the uh, the megalithic sites, then, Carl? We, we obviously want to we want to touch upon some of the basics, if you will, um, in, in terms of the relationship between them, uh, and also, of course, if they were built by the same people that uh, you claim were, you know, basically taking you down to the Nazca lines. Is is that the case here? They were built by us. We were the forced labor. But the mathematics involved with it, with all of it, was quite high and well beyond us. I'm just now figuring it out. Well, you've been you've been doing this kind of work for uh, for years, Carl. Um, Thirty-five. Thirty-five years. That's right. And and uh, obviously, uh, was it this experience then that you shared with us that has what, that was the background to this, or, or were your interests there before that time? No interest at all prior to that. I was a happy railroader. I was happy with my work. I loved my work. But then the railroad died. And I got my trip. All right. Somebody had this all, somebody had this all planned. And it wasn't me. So what more can you say about the, uh the code, uh, Carl, in terms of what you have found. Uh, oh, my God. How many do you want? There's thousands of pyramids out there. I, I, know, I, know, all of. I know what we're trying to get to here, obviously, is kind of a, if you will, you know, an overarching idea, you know, for our listeners that might not be familiar with your work as a way to introduce <laughs> them to easy. what you've been looking at. You know, so maybe some of the highlights, that would be an easy, you know, place to start, maybe. Okay, these geometric artifacts turn out to be navigational aids for alien pilots. For example, the new pyramid they just uncovered in Bosnia. 720 feet high, the Pyramid of the Sun. It has a slope angle on it of 43.8 degrees. It is located on our Earth at 43.8 degrees north. It is 20 seconds of latitude wide, 20 seconds of longitude wide. I have dozens of other pyramids that fall into the same category. They're not 20 seconds wide. They take anywhere from 4 seconds to 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Monk's Mound here in Cahokia, in Illinois is uh, 10 seconds wide. It's very well organized. This, this way, I think, as they come in from space to this world which could be unknown to them, but they had this mathematical mapping system. Apparently, it's universal. And they use universal math to show anybody where they are. Ship drops in from the atmosphere and starts looking around. Where are we? Where are we? They have no idea where the equator is, where the pole is, except what their instruments tell them. They come across this pyramid and they can see from its width and its distance from north to south exactly what latitude they're over. The Zoster's pyramid in Egypt is another example. 450, what was it, uh, what is it, what is it, 411 feet long from north to south, 358 feet long from east to west, four seconds in each direction. You fall in over Nazca, oh, that's another, that's another story over there, Nazca's more 
nothing to slam anything off. But Malik and...